Let's look on how to animate a mouth. It's kinda easy, but it's also very time consuming. You come and have no. It's not necessary for a Lego film. If you put that extra effort into it, it will look really good. And to actually have mouth animations on your brick film is uh, a bit extra touch. So, this is an After Effects tutorial. First of all, you want to go ahead and open up your After Effects. Doesn't matter which uh, which version. Assuming you've already got your animation, you locate it, import that by simply dragging it to your library. Then you find your uh, your voice acting clip or your your line recording. I won't allow this soldier. There we go. And then drag the the line in there as well. I'm gonna try to make it as simple as possible so even the a beginner could understand. You want to start a new composition by dragging your animation. So click here to make it, the animation fit. There you go. Now this animation doesn't look that good because my animation process usually involves uh, digital camera movements, which I'm gonna do very quick here. I'm not gonna show you how to do it in this tutorial though. So, just gonna go ahead and fix that. Looking pretty good. We've got two parts of a dialogue here. She's communicating with uh, with another soldier, but he's in he isn't in the frame, which is good for me because that's less mouth animations. Right, so you want to click on your, your audio file, you want to add it to the timeline. And then you want to go down here to the arrow, next to the blue thing. Click the arrow, then audio, then waveform. And here's the beauty, because here you're going to see all, all, the, all the sound waves. And you can locate exactly where you want to begin the, the audio file. This is going to help us animate the the right amount of uh, mouth stretch when the character is talking. Let's find the part you need. This is a very long audio file because my voice actor, she actually recorded all of her lines in one single take. Which is impressive, but there's also a lot of audio files to go through. I think I found the line. Uh, if your composition isn't big enough or long enough for the, the audio file, you can just drag this to locate your exact audio file. Uh, I'm using commands, and uh, since I'm on a Mac, it's gonna be different for you on the PC, but I'm basically press pressing Shift Command D, which uh, splits the audio file or the, the file in two. Here we go. And when you divide two clips like this, you're gonna see that uh, the waveform disappears and just open it again. Uh, now, when you've got your audio file here, just uh, click and uh, hold to drag wherever you want to place it. My dialogue starts here, when she raises her fist. And now it's time to animate. <laughs> First of all, if you don't hear your audio file, make sure you've got the audio thing selected here. Otherwise you won't hear your audio file. Now, let's begin. To begin, you double click the animation file. That will bring you into the, the original file, which you can then temper with as much as you want without the composition actually changing. So, uh, you want to go to paintbrush here, the brush tool, or command B. You want to select the, the black color. You can change the size of the brush tool by holding command or control on a PC like this. You want to keep it a bit bigger than the mouth line so that you could draw a line like that. Before you start animating your mouth you gotta want to make sure that the, the paint here, the painting thing, is selected to be single frame and not constant. Because if you have it on constant it will yeah, well, self-explanatory. The, the painting brush will be constantly on your animation. You want to keep it at normal, 
and single frame and black. When you see the, the waveform here, the sound waves, at the beginning you want to start by drawing one simple line to indicate the opening of the mouth. As I said before, command, hold command or control to change the size. And then press command and the right arrow or the left arrow to move back and forth one frame. The sound waves get bigger and you, you want to expand the mouth because she goes ah. And here she's actually saying I, which is a simple short word. Then we only got to do the the one mouth stretch movement, which is opening mouth, big, and uh, and then closing it again. And now we have her saying I, I which is it, it's a very short. Uh, I mean, it's uh, it's not even a second. It's four frames. Then you keep doing that. You make the mouth smaller when there's a. Uh, smaller wave and when there's a bigger wave you basically expand it because that's when she's saying words now we're gonna do the the blinking and the blinking is a three frame process and this time you don't you're not gonna do the brush tool you're gonna use the clone stamp. You gotta make sure that it is also selected to be single frame. The clone tool works like this. You, you take something from a, from one part of the, the clip and then apply it to another part of the clip. Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC. And here we're gonna grab some skin tone here. Close resemblance to the, the tone she has under her eyes. So you click there. If you just draw like this, you see that the plus is where you're getting the, the color from. Now the, the color is a bit off, so we're gonna we're gonna actually redo that. There we go. Looks much better. I'm gonna grab here. For female Lego figures or whatever Lego figure that has uh, 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 big eyelashes you want to you want to hide the eyelashes as well because if you blink and the eyelashes stay up that's weird that, that isn't how the eyes work so you want to go ahead and do that on both eyes and make sure they're kind of synced up in the blinking process so that one eye doesn't look like look like this press command right arrow to move forward one frame and now, and now you gotta do the same thing, but this time her eyes are completely shut. So just paint all over. But make sure it still keeps the, the round eye shape that we got on Lego figures. And then the last one. There we go. And that's a blinking animation. I mean, you, you can't really tell that she's blinking, but if you actually look, you can... There's different variations of blinking. Uh, we're gonna do a one-frame blink now, which is basically just doing the same thing, but skipping the, the beginning and the end part. So you just cover the whole eyes for one frame, or two frames if you want to keep it longer, but this is like a shocked blinking. Like, or flirty blinking, where you blink a lot. And if you don't have time, that's the, the way I would do it. Or if the character is in a lot of stress. I mean, you can't tell that she's blinking, but something still makes you see that she's blinking, I don't know. But let's finish it off with a, with a long, slow blinking. Size that and you want to still do the same thing. Don't make the eyelids too big this time. You want to start off small, like this. All right, and then go one frame further. There we go. And this is going to be a slow blink, like a almost falling asleep blink. 
go. And one more thing. And now they're almost closed. I think we're at four or five frames now. This this blinking is isn't ideal if you wanna do a fast animation or a smaller project. But if you're committing to the act and you're actually gonna do a, a big realistic animation, then and you got a lot of time on you, then this is the way to go because it looks really good. Oh yeah, that's a good blinking animation, look at that. That one, I, I'm quite satisfied with that one. Although the, the color is a bit off, you can tell that I've been drawing. And that's usually the case of bad cloning. I mean, look at this. I've got this light part all wrong. Because I, I grabbed from the, the part where her head is the most exposed to light, which is here, instead of right here, which is the the darker color. But it's hard because the area is so small. If you're doing a slow blink, it's more important to make the, the colors match and the, the lightning look good. If you're doing a fast one and you don't have that much time on your hands, then uh, go ahead and do all crazy kinds of colors. But if you're gonna do a slow blink and wanna make it look good, you gotta be careful with the color and the, where you take the clone from. If you're not used to After Effects, then you probably don't know how to export. Press Composition, and then you go Add to Render Cube. Go here to Losses and Format Options, and I usually show, choose, instead of Animation, which is, I choose Apple ProRes 422. It's because I'm on a Mac. There we go. And then Output, I'm gonna call it. I won't allow the soldier because that's her line. I usually do a space between that, and then I put FX. To let me know that this clip is done in After Effects, it's done. You press render, don't forget to render. And it's gonna take some time. Hopefully this helped you in, a, in some sort of way. And hopefully you can uh, go on and make your own an mouth animations now. I won't allow this soldier. I would really appreciate it if you could check out my Patreon and help me make The Dead Brick Season 2 and everything else that we got.